What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, fresh off my trip to Disney's California Adventure. So overall, I had a very productive day. So this is going to just be a quick update recap for my day, kind of a summary of what I did, didn't do, uh, issues I had and all of that. I'll have a final recap on the podcast feed um, in the next day or two. Um, so this recording I'm doing on August 24th. So I'm going to aim for maybe August 25th or 26th. Right now I'm aiming for the 25th just so I can um, organize some of my notes. I did keep a running itinerary of the order of how I did things. So um, I can give you kind of a walking tour of my day. But um, coming out of visiting the park, overall I had a really good time. I was able to go on all the rides I wanted to go on, uh, visit everything I wanted to visit. Um, originally when I got to the park, um, Incredicoaster and, um, the cars, the Radiator Springs Racers was closed, or they were saying temporarily closed, and I wasn't sure if they were going to open. Um, when I went to the entrance of both rides, they said, um, the rides may open at some point during the day. Just keep checking the app or swing by th throughout the day to see when they open. Um, I did, I was walking by, um, the credit coaster I heard them testing it so I knew that one was going to open um so I went back I did something in the Avengers area and I was he as I was heading back to Incredit coaster I saw that um the Radiator Springs Racers was open so I was like all right I'll stop there uh use the Genie Plus system to reserve my spot for Incredit coaster and I went there later so overall that was a good turn of events for me so I'm pleased with that um so going into it, I did purchase the single day ticket for California Adventure since that's the only park I was going to go to. I wanted to try out the Genie Plus system, uh, the lightning system basically to see how that worked. Uh, would, was there any benefit to it or did it benefit me while I was at the park? And then of course I used the website to buy the parking pass so everything was directly done at the park uh, or online. I could do everything through the app on the phone and I didn't need to actually pay for any of that stuff when I got to the park or using the app or anything like that. Um, so overall the process was seamless. I scanned the QR code for parking and then the same thing when I got to the um, gate to get into the park, so save some time there. Um, I did have an issue. Part of it I want to say was me because it was the first time using it and I didn't really do any particular research for the Genie Plus system. I kind of wanted to go into it um, unbiased, unlearned, um, and just see how intuitive of a system it was. And I want to say initially, um, I want, it's not an intuitive system if you buy the Genie Plus system online prior to going to the park, because when you do that, in order to use that system, it's in a different part of the app. Then you would imagine if you bought the, um, Genie Plus Pass when you get to the park, so let's say you buy this the um, Genie Plus Pass online while you're buying the, uh, your, the park ticket. Um, you do have to go into the overflow menu of the app and then I think it's My Trip or My Day. The, basically the first icon at the moment at the top right of that menu. And from there you can select the available rides that are participating in the Genie Plus system and service um, in order to book the time frame that you want to get the reservation for. Um, supposedly it's one at a time, so you do have to reserve one. Uh, once you've used your pass for that first one, then you can reserve another. But from what I heard from various people at the park was that if you wait an hour or two, then you can reserve the next one as well. So even if you haven't used your first one yet, but it lets you keep the first one. So let's say you use the Genie Plus for Incredicoaster, you wait an hour or two, then you can use it for Guardians or Radiator Springs Racers or whatever the next one is after that you want to do. Um, I actually didn't do that just because I um, didn't, it already didn't, basically it didn't come up. The time for it, windows that they gave me were actually super close to when I wanted to go anyway, so it kind of worked out for me. But um, to bring that point home, uh, essentially that's what you have to do when you go buy the Genie Plus Pass online, is it'll automatically add it to your account and you have to go into the overflow menu in the app um, and then to my trip in order to use it. If you buy the Genie Plus thing when you get to the park, then when you launch the app, there's a 
like when you're scrolling through the main page, I guess there's a thing, a little section for you to select um, the Genie Plus system in order to book the reservation time. Um, I guess the first time around when you do that, you do have to link that purchase to your original ticket. So you have to have that um, confirmation number handy or the QR code handy so you can link it up so they know it's you. And once you do that, then you can use it that way. And then I guess, or I'm assuming from there, um, it would actually be straightforward. And you can just do it from that screen. But it just seems like it's a, on a personal level, it feels like there's a weird glitch or bug in the system or not even that far, but it just seems like a uh, hiccup in the intuitive process where if you already have that part as part of your ticket, uh, or regardless if you have it as part of your ticket or not, that once it, it's part of the ticket when you buy it there or if you buy it online and it's already part of your account and you're on that main screen, you shouldn't have to go into an overflow menu in order to get to that system. So I kind of got found that was kind of strange. But when I was waiting in line for Guardians, um, or I got in line at Guardians and um, the people in front of me were able to help me out, the they were actually super nice and they were, one of the ladies was actually a uh, semi pro, you know, a big Disney fan and was like, no, like she's been like, I was been, I've been through this before when you buy it online, then you have to go through this other side, the roundabout way to get to it. And it's, it's, it works when you do it that way. It's not intuitive. And she's like, yeah, I know. But you know, once you know that it's there, then it's, you know, to do that. So, um, after that, the rest of the day, I, um, did go around that way and it was, fine it didn't really hiccup or I didn't have any issues any issues from there so um, I guess that's a tip for if you didn't actually already know that um, I'm assuming most people already know that but if you're going into it like me um, not knowing or if you're not quite sure how that works or why you're glitching out or why um, you know you paid for it like for me I thought I had paid for it but then it wasn't working so I was thinking maybe I didn't buy it or maybe because I was buying the daily pass that it's not available for me so I was like wigging out um, that I'm gonna have to check out the whatever I paid for but as it turns out it was part of the ticket I just had to go a different route to get to it so um, once I got around that um, the rest of the app usage was actually super straightforward um, overall though I had a good time um, I started off as you would in the Hollywood land area um, the opening street and sequence is much like you have at the Disneyland Park with Main Street USA. This is more of the California Adventure is more of the um, like a Disney studio back lot look and feel kind of like an offices and stuff like that um, from like the 20s and 30s and like way back in the day. It's not as big as Main Street, but um, by the time it expands and if you instead of you know veering to the right to the um, Grizzly Falls Grizzly Trails area or instead of going straight to the Pixar Pier area if you head left instead then it's more of a seamless process by going that way just because it flows directly into the Hollywood area and old time Hollywood and things like that with the trolley and the buildings and the back lot sets and the views of you know Hollywood and the palm trees and the mountains and all of that um, if you do go over that route and keep going that through that path, then it'll directly take you into the vendor's campus area, which is what I did. So, um, and if you do that also, that's actually, it feels like the most direct way to get to Guardians of the Galaxy. So if that is the first or the, the mission breakout for Guardians of the Galaxy. So if that is the first ride that you want to go to or one of the rides you want to accomplish early on, then I do recommend doing that, going that route first because it's the most direct route to get you there. Um, you can go through the vendor's campus by going straight down that ma the initial um, street and turning left to go through the, you know, the actual proper entrance for a vendor's campus and checking all that stuff out. But you are, it feels like you're taking, I mean, mentally it feels like it's probably about the same distance, but because everybody is going to be going that way to check it out, that um, you're probably going to hit more foot traffic by going that way. So I would recommend going down the Hollywood section of the park so you're just going that way anyways and then you can go directly into the line of guardians of the galaxy um otherwise i did also have a chance to go like i said i had a chance to go on um radiator springs racers um use the single i used the single file line for that um just because i 
um, as I was going in that direction, I was I saw that the Incredicoaster was open, so I set up the uh, I used my Genie Plus Lightning thingy for that. So I guess because so I didn't have that option to use it on Radiator Springs Racers, but the single rider line was available at that point for that one. So I got in line there. It was act- they said it was about a 30 to 35 minute wait. It took me about 25 minutes or so. Um, it was moving really quickly. I think I got there at the right time or before all the, or maybe right after, or right before a bunch of lightning group people, um, windows opened up. So I think I got really lucky there. Uh, went over to uh, Incredicoaster to, or I, I still had time before my window for Incredicoaster. So I got in the single rider line there to see how long that took. Same thing. It took about maybe 20 minutes or so. It was, there was no one there for, or there was a short line for that that one as well um had a chance to go on the um i want to say golden zephyr the 1920 style um ships that kind of had it was basically a spaceship style of or spaceship style or themed version of the free swings that you can ride on which is another whole separate ride but if you kind of want a futuristic spaceship look from the 1920s or what the 1920s thought a spaceship from the future would look like then the golden zephyr or the whatever the Zephyr thing is, ride is called, that's the way to go there, or that's what the a ride to go on. So I did ride on that. Pretty straightforward, nice views, just rotating views around the um, of the park so you can see the pier area um, in the Incredicoaster, the rest of the pier across the bay and all of that. So there's that. And then from there, um, my window for Incredicoaster opened up, so I went back to there to ride that. Met up with, with a friend for lunch. Had a chance to see the... Um, um, during the day, I had a chance to see the Avengers Assemble um, show with Black Panther and Black Widow. Um, the only weird thing about that is the location... Or I guess I, I'm not sure if it was me or the locations are kind of weird for where the shows take place. So if you want to see Avengers Assemble, and because the buildings look similar, I'm similar, I'm bringing that up. If you want to see Avengers Assemble with Black Panther and Black Widow, that's actually at the Avengers, uh, the Avengers campus building, the one with the, um, one of their ships on top of the building. Um, and that's the building that's right next to the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. But if you want to see the Amazing Spider-Man show, the one with the animatronic Spider-Man that swings across and where he does um, simple parkour style things over some um, crates and boxes and stuff like that, that's actually in the um, around the corner from Web Slinger. So as you're entering the Avengers campus area, that first building you see on the left um, with the crates on top and is basically right beyond the Avengers campus sign. But before you get to the Web Slingers ride, and I think there's a Web Slinger shop right next to it. So before you get to that point, it's right between there. So that's where the Amazing Spider-Man stunt show is. Um, if you if you get to the um, Sanctum Sanctorum where the Doctor Strange show is, then you've also already gone too far. So it's before even that. So something to note there. Um, speaking of which, I did have a chance to see that Doctor Strange show. Um, which was pretty nifty, but I think that show personally would make better sense to watch in the evening because to spoil the end of the show, he does light up some orbs. I'm not going to give away the plot or what happens in the show in case you haven't had a chance to see it yet, but um, basically he lights up some orbs that are strung across the top of the that particular area, which is outdoors, which is fine, but I think it would make a more dramatic... Um, um, impression if it was actually at night. So, um, that, there's that. So otherwise, overall, a good day at the park. I didn't have a chance to eat any of the, or uh, eat at the shawarma joint. Um, my friend has the, and or the friend that I met up with has the annual pass, um, for, or a pass to Disneyland. So we ended up eating lunch, um, at one of the other places we had a drink there. But I did stop at the Pim Tasting Lab, I want to say, to pick up the honey cocktail. I forget the exact name, but it's the honey rum and lemonade mix um, cocktail, basically. I just I basically I wanted to try something. The um, I wasn't really feeling or felt like feel like having a beer at, today, so 
Um, I went with that. Um, it was pretty tasty. It wasn't um, necessarily strong or the lemonade and honey masked the taste of the gin, but overall a good drink. Um, I would recommend it. It was, I like the honey and lemon taste anyway, so adding gin made it that much better. So um, definitely recommend that. Um, as far as the, f otherwise, as far as the food goes, I would imagine it's about as good as any of, of the other food in the um, um, parks. So that, depending on how you feel about the food there anyways, then um, I would recommend uh, trying that out. Um, otherwise, um, if you do like, if you do want to visit California Adventure as an immediate recommendation, I give the park about an 85 to 95 percent of a grade because it depends on what you want to do there. If you're going there just for the Avengers campus and, or an Avengers stuff, then you really only need about half a day, maybe a quarter of a day. Um, and I put that with an asterisk because that would require, of course, having the Genie Plus system. Um, so you don't have to wait in line for um, Guardians of the Galaxy and Web Slingers, which actually I did forget. I did have a chance to go on Web Slingers today as well, which was a good ride. Um, so if you've played or if you've gone on the, I want to say the, um, the, um, Buzz Lightyear, whatever the, um, Toy Story Little Green Men ride is at D the Disney Park, um, I think it's Mas Master Blasters or Mission Blasters, something like that at Disney Park, so one that's right across the way from Star Tours, or if you've played Berry Tales at Knott's Berry Farm, essentially you're doing the same thing where you have to, or it's basically the Spider-Man themed version of the same thing with the um, Toy Story thing at Disneyland or Berry Tales at Knott's Berry Farm. But in this case, you're flinging web shooters, so you have to do the whole Spider-Man action um, to the screen. Well, I guess they're using advanced motion detectors um, to so you can um, attack the spiders and take them out. I guess you can also buy a, a special thing in order to better or get a better score or have a better detection in the game if you want to spend some money to do that. But I didn't do any of that. I just wanted to go on the ride, see how it is. It was fine. I didn't get the highest score, but um, I want to say I got like 13,000 or 33,000, whatever number of points. Once you get the idea of where you're aiming at, it actually felt, it feels like it's doing a good job. So. Um, if you're into that stuff, into that stuff, then definitely worth checking out. But you're really only going to the Avengers Campus for, I want to say, two main rides, which are um, Guardian of, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Mission Breakout, and then Web Slingers for Spider-Man. Um, there are a few shows. So, like I said, there's a whole Spider-Man stunt thing. There's a Doctor Strange one, and the one with Black Panther and um, Black um, Widow. There was a, there is a thing with the Dora Milaj from Black Panther where they um, interact with the audience and um, show you some of their moves, give you some of the Wakandan history and their, the, their relationship with the king, the king of Wakanda and all of that stuff. So I stayed there for a little bit for that as well to uh, watch it and check that out. So essentially you're going there for a couple of rides, a couple of shows and things like that. So that's why I say, you know, maybe half a day to a, a quarter day to about a half a day. So really, if you're, if you get, you know, for example, if you get the park hopper um, tickets, then you, you could um, really go to, uh, for example, Galaxy's Edge and Avengers Campus in a day. Um, depends on the timing, I, I want to say, because I think it's like, you can only you can park hop only after a certain time so it's like eight to one and then one to whatever so there's like a specific time frame so um if you basically whatever the time frame is i would say um depending on how busy it is which is hard to predict but if you use like you know those calendars they tell you how busy they estimate the parks to be on a particular day um you can plan out if you like you basically you give priority to the park that you wish to go to so if you prefer galaxy's edge for rise of the resistance and uh, smugglers run then go to the park where you have more time to visit and stand in line for those rides but if you prefer mission breakout which is just a rethemed um to me it's a, just a rethemed um tower of terror and then web slingers is a, just a rethemed Berry Tales or the Toy Story ride. So 
Um, for me, I would probably prefer to spend more time or at least spend or actually so personally, I would say I would probably want to spend the morning at Galaxy's Edge to um, get that out of the way, get, you know, spend the morning when I'm fresh to check out the Star Wars land, check out the st- the shops and the experiences and the rides, the cantina and all of that. And then after lunch or later in the day, head on over to um, California Adventure so we can you can spend um, as little time in line for... Um, Mission Breakout and Web Slingers and then a lot of the shows too for Avengers Campus are in the afternoon so I think it's like the I think the the uh, Black Panther and Black Widow shows are there throughout the day but Peter the Amazing Spider-Man is in the afternoon Doctor Strange is in the, the afternoon and all that so if you wait till the afternoon to go see those shows and then the, go on the rides you're spending as little time in there as possible but then also um, the sunset it looks a lot better um at california adventure because it's a more open space and you still do get a show over the water so if you're worried about that and you know missing the electric parade but prefer a show on the water then i would probably say go that's why i would say to go to california adventure in the afternoon so you can check out the sunset over the um pixar pier see the sunset behind the roller coaster and the ferris wheel and get a more dramatic shot. So I'm actually thinking to, um, to go to uh, to actually test out this theory one day and go to Galaxy's Edge in the morning and then um, Avengers Campus in the afternoon and then check out the sunset um, so I can see if this theory holds. But that would be my recommendation. Avengers Campus is not necessarily an all day thing. There's not that much to do. Um, even so for me with the genie pass and all that um most of, basically i was able to get through avengers campus and uh, basically all of avengers campus um the incredicoaster and the and i keep well, i don't know why i keep drawing a blank or having i keep having to remember the radiator radiator springs springs racers and the golden zephyr actually the incredicoaster twice um, and all of that, the only two things, the big two things that I wasn't able to get done by lunchtime was the Amazing Spider-Man show and the Doctor Strange show, which I did after lunch. So basically those two shows are the only big things for that I saved after lunch. So I got to the park at eight, everything, basically everything was done by about one o'clock. The only two rides that I did not go on are the Grizzly River Run, I want to say, the big rafting for the grizzly trails area which is basically the calico or the same kind of deal as calico river rapids at knox berry farm um, i didn't go on that and i didn't have a chance to go on soaring over um, america i was busy talking to somebody and i forgot to do pick the ticket window for the genie plus window for the i think the three thirty or 4 o'clock window and so by the time i got um, ta- done talking to them um, I was too, and I went to go pick it. Uh, I was too late for that window, so that's why I actually. But I it was actually perfect timing to get in line for Doctor Strange. But um, even so, even if I had the, if I had done that, basically I would have been able to get all of that done by three thirty or four o'clock. So, in general, California Adventures is a one day thing. Everything can be, get done. Um, if you don't have the Genie Plus system, then you are going to need to spend a little bit more time in line for everything everything today for me had about a 45 minute to one hour window for the wait time i didn't see very many things that were more than that i um soaring over california the couple of times i did walk by when i was walking around the park did seem like it had a long line same thing with um the grizzly river run rapids or whatever that one's called so that one might have been a little bit longer but everything else was moving pretty quickly with um incredicoaster they had three car- trains running so those lines were actually moving pretty quickly so i'd want to say that maybe it might have been on the upper end of an hour but um it was going fast with um radiator springs racers i think that one is also one of those rides that always has you know an hour and a half to two hour of a wait time because all the kids want to go there so um that's one to also pay attention to so if you don't have kids don't care about it then you can skip it but between 
um, Guardians of the Galaxy and um, Radiators being Racers, I would recommend doing those two first. Uh, Web Slingers seems like it moves pretty quickly just because it has um, an eight person car and they have a whole bunch of cars going regular like regularly on their tracks so the line moves really really quickly so even the um like i went in when i got in line for that they said that you know 20 to 25 minute wait i think i was on the ride within 10 minutes so it's a fast moving ride um like i said within credit coaster they had three trains running the golden zephyr was like a 10 minute wait so you know think so california adventure moves pretty quickly granted this is a wednesday after school has started so this is a lower um there's a lower attendance so that's something to consider as well but with genie plus everything becomes that much faster so even without it you're you can spend a good you can or so with genie plus you can basically manage a half day for the entire park um i did skip things like the uh ferris wheel um some of the swings rides i didn't go to the arcade and things like that um i'm interested in stuff like that but that's um not necessarily anything for um, like the, it's not, that wasn't necessarily a group thing that we had to go do that st kind of stuff. We're not really going to the park for any of that stuff. So we didn't really miss out for all, miss out on any of that. So, um, basically when you're, that's something to consider. If you want to, um, spend a half day only at the park, use the Genie Plus system to get there, plan according to what stuff you want to go on. Consider that two hour time frame for the rides to go on to skip around. Um, approximately and plan accordingly if you're gonna plan to spend the day or at least you know hop out or you know get their park opening and skip out before the evening rush when everybody else is leaving then it can definitely be done you know by eight to five kind of thing so just remember to plan out when you want to use your genie plus system and the rides you want to do it on so essentially my recommendation there is once you um, use the pass on a ride and then you get to that ride within your window pick the next ride that you want to get on and use a genie plus on that so that way you have that reservation show up as soon as possible that gives you time to get out there or you know check out the wait times on other rides so if the window they give you is two hours later but in the ride uh, there's a ride along the way that has a 60 minute window or 90 minute window then get in line for that ride go on that ride by the time you get off there you can go to the third ride so you're basically saving time all over the place so um the, so this video went on a little bit longer than i expected but that's the gist of it overall a good day um basically went got there at park opening at about eight o'clock left about 4 30 got through everything i wanted to get through i i mean I, granted i kind of wanted to do soaring over america but it wasn't on the bucket list of uh, rides i had to go on i did go on it before but so i know I have been on the ride, but you know, I'm not, you know, bummed that I didn't go on the ride, but, um, I'm, or basically I'm not bummed that I didn't go on the ride because I had been on it before. It would have been nice, yes, but oh well, what can you do? So if you're watching this video and you have not seen the videos that I recorded throughout the day, I'll have a link in the show notes for the playlist I've put together. So you can um, check out all the videos. I'll have kind of a summary or basically they'll be in order of where I went to everything throughout the day. So they'll be in that particular order, including my preface video. Um, so you can so you can track basically track everything throughout the day. Um, I didn't do any voiceovers kind of, so you can kind of get a feel of the music and the vibe and the atmosphere of the park kind of as how I felt it, how busy it was, the music the themes and basically the same order that I went in um, and then I'll have a link in the descriptions of basically just my thoughts and impressions and stuff like that of the time just a quick you know couple sentences or so so you get that breakdown and then I'll have the full recap in order of everything I did um, a more organized version of this video so you, um, you can get an idea of the day and all of that stuff so that's all there is for this particular uh recap video so thanks for um checking it out following along listening um if you have any questions comments tips of stuff that i missed for next time so whenever i go next time i can think i can take that into consideration um if you want any my impressions of anything that i talked about any of the rides i went on 
or anything like that, then um, you can comment on this video as well. I didn't really check out any of the shops. I didn't really look, look into that. So maybe next time I'll spend more time in the different shops, but those never have really been my thing. So that's why I usually don't go. Um, but it's not to say that they're anything good or bad. Um, my initial impression is I like the little spider bot things that they have outside of web slingers. So I was almost tempted to buy one of those, but I was like, no, that will just be an impulse buy. So I will consider that for next time, maybe. Um, but like I said, if you get for all your feedbacks, questions, comments, impressions, um, any other additional information I can provide, then you can comment on this post um, or comment on this video on YouTube at youtube.com slash Patel N01. Um, and like I said, within the next day or two, I'll have a link up on or a podcast episode up as well. So on the podcast feed with a summary or a summary and full recap of the day as well, which will be a proper order of all the stuff that I did. Um, so by the time you listen to this video as well, all the videos I recorded while at the park will be up as well. So um, you can check that out. Um, I was able to actually get all those videos uploaded while I was at the park. I had a good solid 5G connection for most of the time. So it should be, I should be able to get those uh, published relatively quickly. I'm hoping that everything has been uploaded and converted in up to uh, 4K 60 frames per second. So as good of a quality as I can get from a smartphone. So, and that'll also be part of my review as well when I have the podcast review. Um, published as well. So thanks for tuning into this video, being a follow and supporter and all of that good stuff. As usual, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell and for future videos as they are released and all of that good stuff. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.